What up, my homies? Great to see you stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, January 17th. Now, because it's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday. Duh. <laughs> that means I've got a live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're there for an hour, hour and a half, talking to investors about stocks they're interested in. I'm sharing stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to bring your tickers to me. I'm hoping you bring us some hot stocks like I bring you. I'll go over the information. My lovely co-host Taylor, she'll do the charting for you and we'll give you two opinions. Now, we can only look at so many tickers, no matter how much time we have. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. I put up a placeholder for the video around lunchtime. You can drop your ticker in then. That'll give me more time to look at it and guarantee that the ticker gets looked at. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So what do we do on this show? Well, I share my due diligence with you on hot OTC and penny stocks. Stocks under 5 bucks that you can find on any market. And I'm looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. And most of the stocks I find, I find when I'm looking at the charts because that's primarily where I look for my potential. My heat is in the charts. When I find a chart that shows, say, a lot of volume coming in, or a breakout setup, or a surge that just won't stop, that's heat. Well, when I got a chart that has heat, it's more likely to run with any catalyst I can find. Little catalysts, big catalysts, even a stale catalyst. So now I'm gonna invest that time to go through the press releases and the filings, for 30 days. If there's nothing current, just keep going back. If you find something, that is enough to get a hot chart running. So when you find a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis. Now, yesterday was a little embarrassing, folks. That video went to 50 minutes. For God's sake, I'm not making epic movies here. So I'm trying to tweak what we're doing here. I've been doing this off and on for a couple years because I've just talked too much like I am right now. So what I'm going to do is try to do a quicker version. As day traders, we really only need two things, a hot chart and a catalyst. All the rest is peripheral information. There's nothing wrong with knowing it, but the fact of the matter is it doesn't change day to day. The catalyst is going to change, the hot chart is going to change, but all that other information we look at isn't. So you can catch up with that anytime you want. So I'm going to kind of breeze over that, not do as much reading anymore, and we're going to focus in on the heat more than just the bowl that everything is sitting in. And with that said, I got three stocks I'm going to share with you right now. So let's take a look at our first stock with our new format of due diligence. This is ticker LDTC Letter Tech Holdings. Now she just completed a merger with a SPAC last month in December. Now SPACs, their share price is pretty much locked at $10 until the deal is completed and closed. At that point, the stock starts to trade. Well, once they close this deal, it fell from that $10 region all the way down under three bucks. I don't know why we see this happen over and over again when deals close. Well, we now have a buying opportunity, not because she fell, but because she's bounced. She's come back over those strong SMAs with a big, long spike, came back down and settled on a strong SMA, and she's got a lot of recovery she can give us, folks. So LDTC finished today at $4.71 with just over 4% gains, 420 to be exact. I like that number. She, too, is on the major exchange. Now, they tell us she's a shell company. I don't know enough about the company, but I don't think she is. I think the shell was for the SPAC. I don't think it's caught up yet. This company works with AI sensors for cars. It's like a LiDAR. They've got cameras all the way around the car, and this has a special way of blocking everything, putting a block around a person, putting a block around the car, and seeing everything in all directions. There are no blind spots so your autonomous car can drive itself without you having to worry. It looks like top-notch equipment to me. So what is the catalyst with the company? It's the rebound, folks. It is strictly the rebound. There is nothing special going on right now except this. As you can see, most of the news was about the business combination and how it was getting close to being completed. And then we did have a piece of news that came out on January 9th. 
Letter Tech supports accelerated L2, L2 Plus ADAS development by releasing the Letter Vision Surround View Premium Highway Assist software stack on an embedded platform. Wow, that's a lot of words. What they're saying is they have lots of products. They've got one that works on the front of your car, one that works on the back of your car, blah, blah, blah. Well, they've incorporated all of their products into one big package. They call this a software stack. So now, as I said, you've got cameras all around your car, including up, and there are no blind spots. That is their new product. Is there anything else we can look at? Well, sure there is. What was the relative volume around this company? A little bit of increase, going from 141,000 up to almost 170,000. Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count is relatively nice, 32 and a half million. Haven't got a clue what the float is, but it won't be any higher than that. Market cap, wow, currently at 147 million. Let's see what their financials say. See if anything's been caught up here. We got nothing here, nothing here. And disclosures, uh, we did have somebody just invest into the company, if you can believe that. This was on January 3rd. Let's see, we have Investment Quebec. They just bought themselves 4.3 million shares of the company and now own over 15% of it. Always nice to see a new investor come into the company. And still, the stock fell hard. I mean, folks, we're talking like 75% of its value gone from $10 down to $2.50. You know what? Let's just go look at the chart now because there really isn't anything else here to look at. Oh, my God, look at that chart. <laughs> this is LDTC Letter Tech Holdings. We're going to chart this stock and all the others on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So this is a six-month, four-hour view. And this is really what a SPAC looks like until their deal closes. Right here and going back for a long ways, straight line. She is in the $10 zone. Had some good news come from something. Pushed it up to $10.50 and she slowly climbed up to $11.20. Now, what you've got to understand about a SPAC is that the shares are only worth $10 until they close the deal, actually consummate it. Yeah, you can bid the price up. You can bid the price down. But if the company fails to close a deal, because they only get 18 to 24 months to find a company that wants to do a merger with them, if they do not find someone and close a deal, we get all of our money back. Yes, it is a money-back guarantee on the stock market when you invest in a SPAC. If they do not consummate a deal, you will get $10 back for every share you bought, regardless of what you paid for your shares. So if you got lucky and you actually bought them at $8 because they fell for some silly reason, if they failed to consummate a deal, you'd get $10 back for every share, even though you only paid eight. Well, these people over here that paid $11.20, if the company failed, they'd only get $10. Well, it fell for some reason. Somewhere in this region, they closed a deal. I thought it was this day, but the news doesn't correlate to that. In any case, she fell from $11.20 down to $2.32. That is a humongous drop, folks. But look at this bounce back. This is a serious token sign of recovery in my book. She came down to that low bubble, and she bounced off of that from $2.32 up to $9.99. Whoa, one penny from her original purchase price of these shares. Now, to me, it's not about the price she jumped up to, though that's great. We like to see that. It is about where she stopped on the 200-day SMA. She could have stopped on the 50 or the 200 hole, but instead she went all the way up. To me, I'm interpreting this as the stock wants to grab as much back as she lost. She wants to recover as much as she can get. I like that. She did fall all the way back down, but she fell higher than where she started from. The other half of this big token sign. So this looks great. Now this doesn't mean that she's going to run tomorrow or even the next day. It just means it's virtually imminent very strong possibility so don't take your eyes off of it just keep watching so she came down went sideways for about five six days cut through her 200 haul and once she got on top of her 50 she came alive she jumped 
came down on to a nine day and settled on that and is climbing now. Looking really good. Pushing towards the 200, which is currently at 821. We are at 8, uh, 471. Now, you got to remember, I'm not talking about a breakout. I am talking about a recovery, just getting up to that 200. Well, between now and then, the price is going up. The 200 is coming down, so it is going to get smaller and smaller. But still, there's a lot of gains to be taken there. Our 20-day and our 50-day SMA have already turned around or are starting to climb, and our 200 haul is going flat right now. Our oscillators, our PPO is climbing steady. She had a crossover five days ago, just like our MACD. She's climbing nice and easy, and our RSI is up there at 61. Not a bad recovery chart. Looking at our 20-day one-hour view. So she was in a downtrend, hit this low bubble, gave us this solid token sign that she wants to take back what was taken from her, came back down and she just hovered over top of this 200 day haul. Look at how evenly spaced it is folks, like she's floating on vapor. But right here is when everything changed. When she got over top of the 50, she came to life, gave us a directional intentional spike through the 200, showing more intention that she is wanting to climb came back down and went to it, jumped up through the 200, bounced off her 50, took off from there, and it looks like she's falling back to bounce off the 50 again. All of our SMAs have already crossed the 200, and our 200 is totally flat, just now starting to climb up. It is looking picture perfect for a run. Oscillators are very strong, but there is a wee bit of pullback because of the falling in the back part of the day. Taking a look at our five day, five minute, Wow, there's a lot of volatility here, folks. She's bouncing dollars. Pre-market here, she was at $4.30. Fell a buck 30 before the bell, down to three bucks. Then jumped, and by the end of the day, she was up near five bucks again. Pushed to a high of 520, falling back down here to 374, and then jumping to 516. So you are seeing a couple of dollars up and a couple of dollars down every couple of days. That's a good chart. So she was at a low here, hit this high, did a rubber ball bounce over the under and over the 200. And right here, this is where we can see what's going on. She came down on top of the 200, firm and hard, jumped, looked like she was gonna bounce on the 50 here, but broke the 50. This is where we gotta be concerned with here. She came under the 50, and now she's doing this weird sideways thing, getting a flat floor right there. Well, to me, it looks dangerous. It looks like she's dangling in the air, and she's going to fall all the way from 470 down to 440. I don't want that to happen. I'm thinking she's sitting on an SMA on another chart that we can't see from here. Now, we've already looked at the 4-hour and the 1-hour. So let's take a look at the 15-minute. Well, we do have one there, but again, you can see it is underneath the 50 and the 200, and she isn't looking like she's going to come up from here. How about that 30 minute? That one looks a little bit better. All right, what I can see here, let me back this out just a little bit. So she came down through the 20 here, came back up and bounced right here on the 20, very strong came down and she's bouncing on it right now. That's the way I see this. She has hit the 20 right there perfectly. Bounce, 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 and I think she's gonna bounce off of this 20 and start to climb again. I like LDTC for recovery because it is a SPAT company that just came on the market. They haven't done anything wrong. There's no bad news. We know they're making revenues. I don't know what they are. I haven't done a deep dive into this. You gotta find their own financial, which was released. They've got multiple products because they had to put all those products together to make that one big product we were reading about in the news so that your entire car is covered. So there's nothing wrong. This should come back up and there's a lot to be taken. So put LDTC on your watch list for the next week. By the end of the week, we should probably see all the gains taken back. All right, let's move on to that next stock. So we're gonna jump into our next stock, continuing on with our new attitude for due diligence. Can we please get to the point? <laughs> so we're looking at ticker RTC. This is Bajian Group. 
Bajian Group finished today at $3.19 and just over 18% gains. And I can see she is getting aftermarket activity right now. And she's on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ. So what is RTC about? AI. AI video to be specific. Bajian is a one-stop AI video solutions provider with their core expertise in software as a service and payments as a service solutions. Bajian offers a wealth of video-centric technology solutions, including video as a software service and a payment service, video cloud and software, and video AI and system solutions. And conveniently, the news right here is our catalyst. Nice, huh? Now this is old news. This came out in November, but it is our catalyst, believe it or not. The Bajian Group had received a letter from the NASDAQ that they were late filing their annual report for fiscal year ended June 30th, 2023. And their filing is a 20F because they're a foreign company. No 10Ks or 10Qs. And they were given 60 days to get it in, which ended January 16th, which was yesterday. And would you believe they did it? They did it. They got there in time, right on the mark. January 16th, the filing was received, the 20F. I have no idea what's in it. I really don't care. The catalyst is, is that they met the deadline and they pulled that threat of being kicked off the major exchanges down to the OTC. That is what you're looking at when the NASDAQ says fix it or else. So they got it fixed. That's our catalyst on this hot chart. So let's just take a real quick look at the other general information. Our relative volume for the company took a jump. She was under the radar at 45,000 shares for the last 30 days. Today she did, oh, three, four times that much, jumping to almost 160,000 shares. Share structure for the company, we got a low float. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't look. 3.2 million shares is what's in the outstanding. I don't know what the float is, but it's not going to be any higher than that. So we absolutely have a low float, no more than 3.2 million. Market cap, 8.8 .8 million. Financials, are they making any money? They are, and it was a strong end of their year for 2021. Where's 2022? We don't see it. We got nothing there, and I'm not even going to jump into the balance sheet, folks. You know, the information we're looking at, most of it is here all the time, not changing. The catalyst and the chart change every day. So we're not going to worry about what we're not looking at because you can catch up with that real easy. And disclosures, I don't think we had anything over here outside of Shoja. Well, I mean outside of the financial, of course. The other one was the 6K. That was the notification from the NASDAQ. So let's go jump into that hot chart. We are back here at TOS looking at RTC. This is Bajian Group, six month, four hour view, with our high being $9.50 virtually six months ago, and our low is at $1.31 at the beginning of December. Huge drop over this entire period of time, and we've got some strong supports. One up here at about 713, a very strong one here at 464. The one we're shooting for right now at about 398 and the one we're breaking right now at three dollars now we did have a serious downtrend here and once she hit that low bubble she stopped now she's not necessarily changing her trend by climbing but she has changed her trend nonetheless she's going sideways for many a days here until she hit her 200 day haul penny stocks love the 200 day haul she got over that started pushing towards her 50 and once she broke the 50 all her real excitement came out. She bursted up with a nice jump here, and this went from $1.74 up to $2.79. That is a $1 jump there. She came back down, didn't even touch the nine day, and shot up again from virtually $2 through this strong resistance all the way up to the one we're shooting to now, $4. Folks, that is a humongous jump. Then she came back down and she's jumping right now off of her 50, breaking the 200 day and this support at 303. This is looking like it's ready to run, folks. And this $4 mark is where she goes. So we'd be looking at about a dollar run just to get there. And if she starts running that hard, chances are she could get a nice spike pushing through that, reaching to the next one. And that's when you'd want to sell. As soon as she breaks this one and gets up, don't get greedy. Take that as the bonus and watch her come back down. 
just the way I would see it coming. We got lots of volume here these last few days. All of our SMAs are turning up, coming up to the 200-day SMA, which is just now starting to level out. That is going to make it the most vulnerable time to break out. Osculators, all of them look good. Every single one of them is pushing up right now. Our RSI is clear up at 76. Roasted. Take a look at our 20-day one hour. Sweet, she's on an uptrend. Dollar 37 jumping up to that strong resistance of four bucks, coming back down and playing with the 200 until she got settled. And you can see we are not only flat, we are turning up on our 200 now. All of our SMAs are underneath and pushing up. It all looks strong. All of our osculators are pushing up. RSI is still in the overbought at 75. Looking hot. Check out that five day, five minute. This is beautiful. That's an uptrend for the last five days. In the last five days, she has gone from $1.85 to $3.21. That is nice, folks. That is virtually 100% gains right there. She is riding on her 50-day SMA, no problem. Not even coming close to that 200. Now, I notice it just came into the picture. That worries me. Now, it's been here for a few days, so maybe we've gotten by that tag and touch. Most of the time when I see a new SMA come onto the chart, wherever the price is, above it or below it, the price normally goes to the new SMA and pays homage. Sometimes it stays there, sometimes it goes right back to what it was doing. This didn't do that. This shows me this price has got a mind of its own. Forget the new guy in town. I don't care who he is. I've gone a mission and I'm going for it. And that's what it looks like. All of our osculators are still very hot pushing up. RSI is at 66 right now. I like RTC, folks. But of course, you got more due diligence to do now, don't you? Our next candidate to consider is ticker LCCN, Leap Charger Corporation. Come on down. <laughs> this stock's got two hot catalysts going for it right now. LCCN finished today just under a buck 40 at a dollar 38 and just under 3% gains. She's on the OTC pink. She is current. She's also got that verified profile transfer agent verified validated information. The only validated information you get with pinks. She has also got independent directors listed. This tells us she has serious intentions of uplisting. They're just not talking about it. They've actually listed them here. They also tell us that she has a shell risk. This tells us that they're in business doing something, but they're not making any money. Well, that was the case up until here recently. Now they're making money. That's one of our catalysts. So what is this company about? Well, Leap Charger Corporation builds EV charging stations and they disperse them out there to the world. Though right now they are solely in the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, though they tell us that they want to expand to North America, Europe, and South Asia in the near future. Well, the near future must be here because they just came out with news about the deal they're cutting in Canada. They also have a mobile app that allows customers to easily locate their chargers, reserve a charging spot. Oh, I like that. I hate waiting. And pay for their charging sessions without having to use any cash. And of course, like everybody else, they've integrated advertising into their units by using a video screen. Except... Unlike the one down at my gas station, which is about six by eight inches, <laughs> theirs is 55 inches big. Folks, most of the pumps I see are smaller than 55 inches. This thing is over four feet large. And they help with the companies lowering the prices of electricity. They say they actually use some of this advertising money to bring down the expenses. So jumping on over to those catalysts, I've already told you one, the company has just come into money. As you can see, they had nothing going on until August. They brought in $44,000, didn't get to keep much, only $2,000, but it's a start. You've got to start somewhere. Looking at the quarterlies, that's it, folks. That last quarter is the first money that they've got, and we're not even going to look at the balance sheet. Going back to that news, there is a catalyst here. We're going to look at that catalyst, but I do want you to see this news because this is all from the last 45 days showing you they are active. They are doing things. 
Leap Chargers set to enter the Canadian market. They ink an agreement with Willow Manor Creek for installation of EV chargers. Ta-da! They're not only over there, they're now over here. In January, the company unveils Future of EV Charging Home Solutions to hit supermarket shelves in Dubai. The company has a home charging unit. A lot of companies do, but this one you can buy at the store and install yourself. <laughs> it comes in a very plain box. It doesn't look too exciting, but they've got it and it works. Another piece of news, Leap Charger reaches milestone by generating revenues in Q4. There's your first catalyst. Here's our second catalyst, Leap Charger to cancel 32 million shares of common stock. That was on the 12th. It has not been done yet. Now hold on, we're gonna get back to that. Last piece of news, Leap Charger partners with exotic technologies to integrate additional security and encryption features to its app. I don't know what it's all about, but you can see they're making deals. They're getting in new markets and they have just started making revenues and they just told us they're getting rid of 32 million shares. How many shares do they have? 53 million. They're gonna get rid of 32 million, which is 60% of the shares. That's gonna leave us 21 million shares. Now, I don't believe that's gonna change our float. I think our float's gonna stay the same, 10.9 million, which is a great float, folks. That's outstanding. But what's just happened here is by the elimination of the shares, the whole bowl, doesn't matter if they're on the market or off the market, they're all in the same bowl. We have just got 60% more value in our shares when it happens. It still reads 53. Now, normally these sort of things only take a few days. It's not like they have to get approval for it. They're just doing it. They've gone through the paperwork. So it should be done here in the next couple of days. So this is going to drop. When it does, the shares are going to be worth more, which means the price should go up more. How much more? Well, I don't know, but there's 60% more value on the shares. Is it going to be 60% of this or what? I don't know. But when you've got a hot chart and you've got a catalyst that says we're going to start rising, you just want to get in there. Read your charts. And when she starts to dip hard, when you look at your four hour and your one hour chart and see she's come underneath one of those SMAs she's been riding, get out. Just take your gains and get out. Market cap for the company currently is 71 million. Now that's going to change as soon as they cancel 32 million shares because your market cap is figured out by taking all of those shares and multiplying it times the price. So that's going to drop considerably. What is the relative volume on the company today? Doink! We're up there by three times as much, a 300% increase, going from 52,000 to almost 160,000. Dunn looked at the shares, Dunn looked at the financials, and I don't think there's anything over at Disclosures. I'd have shared that with you. No, nothing here. So let's go look at my favorite part of due diligence, the chart. We're now taking a look at ticker LCCN. This is Leap Charger. We're looking at a six month, four hour view. And from a day trader's point of view, that's a very interesting chart. Not enough volatility. So six months ago in October, we hit a low of 41 cents. She climbed for over 30 days, easy and steady, just floating on that nine day SMA till the end of November when she hit a high of $2.15. Then when she started to fall away, she got volatile. Look at the size of these bars and how big they're bouncing around compared to this. Big difference. She came underneath the 50 day SMA and I'm not quite sure what happened here, but it fell away fast from $1.70 down to 60 cents. Bouncing back up here to the dollar range, still a lot of volatility until she crossed the 20 day SMA. She had a big bounce right here showing us her intention, her enthusiasm. <laughs> Once she got over that 20, everything calmed down. Now we got these little itty bitty baby teeth price bars one after another like she's calm she's not worried about anything she's on a mission and she knows exactly what she's doing walked right across that 50-day sma without any problem celebrated here that she didn't have a fight and she's back to climbing our 20 days just crossed a 50-day sma and you can see looking at the full chart we have got volume increase it is getting strong right now stronger than it was back here 
And what I'm thinking is that this is going to start steady climbing just like that did. Oscillators looking good. We had a crossover in our PPO about a week ago. It's steady pushing up just like our MACD, which has been climbing for two weeks, as our RSI has been doing. And it has just gotten up underneath the overbought at 67 right now. That is a very sweet, easy chart for a four-hour chart. I like it. 20-day, one-hour view. So there's all that volatility hitting a low here of 50 cents before she crossed the 50. You can see once she's firmly got her nine-day SMA over that 50, she had that big jump, and then all of a sudden, these little itty-bitty bars just floating on that nine-day SMA. And right now, we have got a breakout on our hourly chart. There's your token sign, folks, jumping off the nine through the 200, spitting out a big old wick, setting a new high, and coming back to the 200, and now going sideways. All of our SMAs are about ready to cross the 200. That's going to give the price some more strength to go up. Everything looks really strong here, except we do have two red bars here, which are affecting our oscillators. Our PPO has been climbing steady, but right now it's gone flat. Our MACD, which you really can't see, but I can zoom in on that. That up. Oh, <laughs> let me get the right tool and I can zoom in on that. I do believe that has crossed over. It has. It has crossed over to the downside right now. And our RSI is actually climbing right now, pushing back up. So we've got some mixed signals. There's a fight going on here right now, but it looks real juicy to me. Looking at our five day, five minute view. Oh, come on. That's a beautiful chart. We got a low bubble here underneath the 50 of $1.10. She came up and that was it. She has just been bouncing off of the 50 all these last five days. Had a big bounce here to $1.48. Coming back down to her 50 and bouncing. And right now things look a little bit different. She's come deep under the 50 compared to all of these bounces here. She's come back up and she's fallen back underneath it. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. However, looking at her long chart, folks, I have a lot of confidence that this it is what is being created here. We're going to see a duplicate run here for many a days. So this is a stock I think isn't a day trade. This is a swing trade. You're going to get into it for a couple weeks. Watch it move. Watch it climb. And if you're on your five-minute or one-minute chart and you see it drop, before you panic, jump back here to, well, the, the one-hour chart is perfect. See if she is still sitting on top of this nine-day. And if she did drop, is she only tagging the 20? She's not actually going anywhere when she tags the 20. She hits it once and comes back up. So don't panic on your five-minute and your one-minute charts if you see a drop. Come over to the one hour and make sure she's still in line. I like this one. It's nice to play a stock that doesn't make you feel frantic. Last stock we're taking a look at, you could say falls into the late breaking news category. If you can call it tweet news. This is ABQQ, AB International Group. Now, we have looked at this stock before just a couple weeks ago, right before New Year's. This is an American company, but they're primarily doing their business in Asia and in China. They're in the entertainment sector. They make movies. They distribute these movies. They've got a movie house here in America, in New York. They've got a website, which is their subsidiary, ABQQ TV. But primarily, they distribute these movies through China. Well, New Year's Eve in China, as tradition would have it, Everybody wants to go to the movies, and big blockbuster movies are released. Well, this company was releasing a movie on New Year's Eve, and they had to get a lot of special permission to actually show it because a concert movie has never been shown in China before. It was a concert movie with Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift has got a lot of fans in China, so they expected big things, and they got it. It was a blockbuster event. But we're not here to talk about that. I'm just reminding you what the company does. Now, here in the last few months, there's been a lot of changes to the share structures of the company. In November, they canceled a 1 in 10,000 reverse split. Whew, thank God we didn't go through that. 1 in 10,000. Shit. Last stock we're taking a look at, you could categorize as being late breaking news. This is 
Last stock we're taking a look at, I guess you could categorize under late breaking news, if you can call it tweet news. <laughs> this is ABQQ, AB International Group. Now we have looked at this stock just a couple weeks ago, right before New Year's. This is an American company, but they do most of their business in Asia and in China. They're in the entertainment industry. They make movies and they distribute the movies. They do have a movie theater here in America in New York. They've got a website where they put all their movies, ABQQ TV, which is their subsidiary, but they like to get the movies out in the movie houses in China. Well, in China on New Year's, it is traditional for everybody to want to go watch a movie. Wow, imagine how many people that is in China. Well, this company was releasing a movie that they had to get a lot of special permissions to release. Never before has a movie like this been there. It was a concert movie with Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift has got a lot of fans in China. Well, it got approval, it went out New Year's Eve, and it was a blockbuster. Now, that's not what we're here to talk about. I'm just reminding you what the company does. Now, in the last few months, they've made a lot of changes to the share structure of this company. Good ones. In September, they canceled a 1 in 10,000 reverse split. 1 in 10,000. God, am I glad we missed that. Then in November, they canceled the creation of a new series of stock, the F series. And in December, they canceled existing shares, B shares. And I've also heard something that the CEO did something with his own shares as well. So he is doing a lot, but more importantly, he's doing it quickly. There's not a lot of time passing between each one of these events. Well, he's just told us about something else he's going to do over here at Twitter. I am at the, their Twitter account, and this news came out about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, just about four hours ago. ABQQ subsidiary, ABQQ TV, will issue no more than 49% equity of ABQQ TV to the shareholders in exchange for the shareholders canceling up the 2.4 billion shares of ABQQ's common stock. Now, they're not saying it is going to be 2.4 billion. It could be up to that, and I'm going to presume it is. So the question arises, how many shares have they got? Well, let's see, 2.5 billion just a little over. So if we subtract the full amount, 2.4 billion, we are left with 167 million shares. Folks, that is over 95% of all the shares wiped out. That is great for us. That is giving us extra value. Now, normally I would say that's 95% extra value, but I'm not sure how this is breaking down. I am not an accountant. I haven't seen any numbers. They tell us of all the equity that comes from this, the shareholders are only going to get 49% of that equity. The other 51% is going elsewhere. And I don't know to whom. And you know, to be honest, I really don't care. The fact is they've wiped out a ton of these shares and they've made it realistic now. That's going to make it appealing to other investors. That's the great thing about that right there. Now, this is not officially official. That is to say, it is not over here in any disclosures. There aren't any 8Ks or 6Ks filed about this. There's no news presses, only the tweet. Now, there is a certain amount of liability whenever a company tweets something. They just can't fabricate information to make the stock move. So, I'm believing what we just read there. Now, this just came out two hours, uh, four hours ago at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And as you can see, not a lot of people have seen it. Don't you think that's big news? Doesn't it sound exciting to you? Well, their volume dropped today about 20 million shares from 73 million down to 53 million. I don't think a lot of people have seen that tweet, but I bet you it gets around on Twitter. I bet you this video gets it around a little bit. So tomorrow we could see a whole different story when it comes to volume. Share structure we've looked at, financials. How about that? Yeah, they're making money. They've dropped from 2022 to 2023, about 50%. And oh my God, they're really losing a lot of money now. 1.8 million at the end of August of 2023. And their quarterlies, yay, look at that. They are making stronger revenues and they're finally making profit. So that doesn't look bad there. 
And the disclosures, I do believe we pretty much probably covered. Yeah, we have. I'll take a peek here at this Form 4 just to see. Oh my God, it is. Big news, folks. These are purchases. Whenever an insider acquires or disposes of the company stock, they have to file a Form 4. But they can get shares in a lot of different ways. We are primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. And you can know when they do because of the code. P for purchase, S for sale. There's a lot of letters. Anything else, it's not a buy or a sale. Well, look at that. 7.5 million shares. Yeah, they're super duper cheap. I know that. But it is a buy. How about this one here? That too is a buy. Ooh, look at that one, folks. 43 million shares. Now, who's buying these? This is the chief executive officer. He bought that one. And this one is also the chief executive officer. Let's check this third one out since we're here. Chief executive officer bought another 151 million shares. Last one. Oh my God. All right. It's a D. It's not a sale. It's something else. So let's see what we got here. 151, uh, 194, um, 200. 200 million shares the CEO has just bought. There's another catalyst. <laughs> now, would you believe I have not looked at the chart? I saw the news. I went and got these pages prepared, but I don't know what the chart looks like. So let's go look at it together. Looking at ABQQ, we're actually looking at a one day, one year chart to get a big picture. As you can see, she's been falling and flat for quite a while. She actually hit the basement floor here back in May of 0001 and it doesn't look like she was coming off of that floor for a very long time until the 200 started getting close we started seeing some activity so volume started coming in and once she broke out over that 200 the picture changed lots of volume regular volumes come into the picture she took a big leap here all the way up to 0035 falling back to her 200 day haul on her one year chart, jumping back up to the 20. Oscillators are in recovery right now on our one year chart. Looking at our six month, four hour view, flat as a pancake here. Soon as she got over that 200, we started seeing some excitement, some big bounces, put herself onto the 50, and that's the one she's bouncing off of, hard and firm. She did take a nice run here, fell fast, came under the 50, quite scary here, and then bounced right back up through her 200 haul, which is a very strong SMA, and she's pulled back, and right now she is at 0023, sitting on top of her 50-day SMA. Our oscillators, uh, they're all flat right now. They were going crazy, but everything at this very moment is flat, though they all look like they were pointing towards a recovery. Coming down to our one hour, 20 day view. Now we're starting to see something. We are on top of the 200 for the most part. 0013 going to 0035. That's 250% run right there. Crashing our 50 and bouncing back. A lot of arguing with the 50 as she's falling. She fell underneath the 200 here and then bounced came through every single SMA. She is now on top of them all. And right now we got a big knot of all of our SMAs right here. That needs to get sorted out, but she is above everything. That puts her in a good position while they sort that out. Looking at our five day, five minute, big tumble down to this low of 0016, some sideways activity for the rest of the day. A big jump to get up over this 200. And right now is when she started to go flat and now she's climbing. She is climbing up on her 50 day SMA. She broke that bouncing off over 200, coming up to the 200 haul. She's bouncing between two very strong SMAs right now. And that's what I'd be watching. I can see the 200 haul is coming down. The 200 SMA is coming up. She is stuck between the two of them. She's probably gonna get squeezed. And the way the chart looks, I think we could expect her to climb up ultimately. Our oscillators say she is losing the battle right now. Everything is coming down. She could easily come back down to this 200 and maybe just crest underneath it a bit before she takes off. This may be a very good buy zone right in this area. 
waiting for a confirmation. You just don't buy it because it fell. You got to wait to see if she's going to do the reverse and start to climb again. So I am liking ABQQ, considering they're going to get rid of 2.4 billion shares sometime. But we don't know when that's going to happen. So right now it's about how many people are going to see that tweet. How many people are going to get excited about 2.4 billion coming off of 2.5 billion, right? There could be a huge jump in volume tomorrow. This could be a big blast off of this 200. That's why I'm liking ABQQ. Now, folks, we've covered a lot of stocks here, and I didn't cover as much as I usually do. So now you've got more due diligence to do. Don't ignore it, folks. You worked hard for that money. Work hard on your DD, too. Remember, the more you know, that's right, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.